Hi everyone, my name is Ron Leite and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we are going to see batch macros in Autrix Designer. In the other video we talked about standard macros, how to create them, some tips on checking macros inside Autrix Designer and also setting your macros default folder. Today we will see how a batch macro works. Batch macros are useful when you have a lot of data that you have to analyze and it's not just a single step. You will need to make several steps or have several files or have a lot of information that you need to process in many different ways. That is not just a single workflow like the standard macro. So then you may have to use a batch macro or a iterative macro. A batch macro has a control parameter, something that defines when the workflow will stop doing that process. A iterative macro is different. It will run a set amount of times or also use some sort of condition to end. In this example here for batch macros, we have two files that we need to open and those files have also two tabs that we need to get data from them. So the first file is called USA stores and it has a table called California and one called Florida. The second one is called Brazil stores and has one called Rio de Janeiro and another called Sao Paulo. Here I can have my data, let me just run here. I can have my data using the union tool and I have some categories, some category ID, sales amount and the local. The problem is the category here can change. So in this example, it's C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and sometimes it's just a number. The local can be the name of the place and the department or just a number referencing the local. If I try to analyze and input this using the dynamic input or just a wildcard, I'll have some sort of errors. So in this example here, I use the directory to check the files in my folder. So I have Brazil stores and USA stores. If I try to read this in the dynamic input and configure it to read one of the workflows here, I can see I can read one workflow, then I can use the full path here and try to run. The problem with this is that before I use the full path, I have to set up the sheet names here in the full path. As you can see, if I expand this, I don't have the sheet names. So I'll get an error saying I didn't specify a sheet. The main problem is that I have two sheet names and just one line for this. I can work this around, I can add the sheet names. But that's just a bit, little bit hard. If I had, for example, 7, 8, 10 files with, I don't know, 5 or 6 sheets, that would be very troublesome to configure. If I try to read using a wildcard, I can see that I can read the files and get the list of sheet names. But then, here, I'll just be getting one of the files if I use the wildcard. I can't read both files with the wildcard and get the sheet names. So the solution would be inputting manually one by one as I can see here or using a batch macro. In this batch macro here I have a directory reading the files so I can see here I have the two files. This select is just to let the full path, the other information is relevant for me and then I pass the full path inside this macro. Now what is this macro and how it works? If I click here you can see that I have to select a field which is called full path of the file and I pass on full path. This macro is the read sheet names. So if I open it here, I have just a very small workflow and you can see here that I have another macro inside this one. So when you use a macro, you can have macros inside macros inside macros and so long. You can just go and continue adding macros. Just beware to not let the workflow too complicated so it's easier to understand what's going on. 
Inside here, the main thing with batch macros is that I have a control parameter. Here in the interface, I can see that I have a control parameter here. And if I add this to a workflow, let me just open here. If I add this to a workflow, it automatically goes to a macro and batch macro. So if you have a control parameter, you have a batch macro in Alteryx. Now, back here to the example. Here I'll have the full path of the file, which is that question in the previous workflow. In the update value, I'll just be using the update value default and then select the update here. I'll be using a specific string. I don't want to select the full path here. Why is that? This macro is using the example for USA stars and reading the list of names. So here I have Florida and California. I'll use this information to then pass on to another macro that will read the file using the file name here. The problem is, if I just select the update input data tool, I'll lose the information that I want to get the list of sheet names. So I have to select this, I have to replace the specific string, and then erase here. By default, I'll have this here. I'll just erase the last bit of the file path. Then, this is just an example I put here to read the file. I use a formula tool to update the file name to include the sheets here. So I remove the list of sheet names and then add the sheet name and a dollar sign. And then I pass on to another macro which requests my file name, which is this column right here. And the next macro is way kind of easier. This is just an input file that I will read a specific sheet and I will output the results. Here I have a control parameter again and this time I can use the input data tool by default because I will have my full path enabled with the sheet name already. Now another important thing when using batch macros. If I come here in interface designer and in the cog for the settings, I can change here how the output mode will work. In the example we have, we have the category sometimes being just a number and sometimes being a text. So we have to auto configure by name or position. The position here can, can't be used actually because the Brazil stars have a different column schema so that wouldn't work. So we have to auto configure by name. If you are sure that all of your files and all of your sheets have the exact same pattern you can use the first option, but this one is just for the best, you avoid errors. Inside here, you can also customize your icon. Alteryx allows many different icons for the macros, or you can add a custom one. This is a 41 by 41 pixels image, so if you have one, you can browse here and add it. I'll just use the standard for now. I'll hide this, and when I use this, I save, I go back here, this is using the same information here, so auto configure by name. Then I hide this and I go back to here. If I run, you can see that by the end of the macro, I'll have all of my informations. And here I use the file name just to see where the information was coming from. This column here is added on the last macro used. You can see here that I'm using the output file name as full path. Then I just use a regex to select the location here from file name, I select to clean the data and a browse tool to have all of my data. If I compare this one to this one, you can see that I have everything I want. And also, as I said in the previous videos, those macros can be used to read any kind of Excel file, having different names, having different sheet names, not just this example here. So, if you have those two files here and you have a workflow of, I don't know, 100 files with 100 sheets, it will use and concatenate every information using the name to select the position. So macros can be used over and over again in many different cases if you have configured them correctly. So that's it for batch macros in Alteryx Designer. Thank you for watching and have a great day. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.